Remember this modding video and this modding video? A lot of you asked for me to release it or how to even mod a game. So you came to the right place. Once you're ready to release your mod, you can upload it to Thunderstore or Game Banana. Those are like the standard place to go for mods. If you're looking to release a mod, I would suggest using Bepinex. It's a modding plugin. And be careful, please mod legally and only mod the games that allow modding. Anyways, let's jump straight into it. Okay guys, first we're gonna look for the software you wanna use. So we're gonna go look for .NET Decompiler, which basically decompiles c -sharp code to get edited. So the first one we have here is uh, iOSpy, which is the one I personally use for all my mods. You can find it in this GitHub and it's free, it's open source. And next we got DNSpy, which is another trustworthy open source .NET decompiler. It seems to be archived, so there's no updates, but it seems to work and it seems to be better. And then there's this one, .peak. I've recently heard about it. It's by JetBrains, which is pretty reputable. I haven't seen anyone use this yet, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people have and it seems to be really good. But yeah, it's free and go check it out if you wanna use this one. Okay, now I'm gonna show the tutorial using iOSpy. So over here we have Carlson, which is the game I first modded and uploaded to my channel. So I'm gonna show you how I modded this game. So this is the application, double press, you get Carlson. Wait, why is- Alright, here we go, Carlson. And yeah, this is the regular game. So it's by Danny. You guys know Danny by now. Like, should I reintroduce him? Who's Danny? Well, Danny's this very epic game maker dude. So right now it's looking pretty normal. Let's go mod it. Okay, first you're gonna wanna locate the folder, the data folder. And let's go into managed. And here is the DLL we wanna go for. So assembly C sharp dot DLL. Go ahead and right click, open with, and find a IOSpy. And then you wanna open it in IOSpy. So here we're, we already have a bunch of uh, other mods I've been attempting and uh, go, go look for the bottom most one and it should be there. And then the code is all within these uh, braces. Uh, let, let's say we want the whole project. So let's right click and save code and then go make a new folder. Let's call it mod. Okay, save it in here. Doesn't matter. Now it's decompiling, it's really fast. Like 1.8 seconds, is that world record? Okay, now let's go into the folder we made, mods, and now you can see all of the code. I'm telling you guys, do not do this for illegal reasons, please. All right, now locate the assembly C sharp project. You wanna make sure you have Visual Studio so you can edit the code, all right? So just one quick Google search, you'll find Visual Studio by Microsoft. I recommend this the most because you're coding in C sharp. Download Visual Studio, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. All right, double press it. And now you're in. Okay, so let's say I want to replicate everything from the video. So what did we add first? We added aiming. Okay, so uh, these are all the scripts that would be inside Carlson. So let's say all of these are implemented in the editor. We're going to look for the script that would make the most sense to be on an object that's going to be loaded in the level. So let's say I want to implement aiming, right? What script am I going to edit it in? Most likely we're gonna do it in the player script. So let's go ahead and find a player script. So so let's go to player movement over here, open it up, and oh gosh, okay, we have a lot of stuff. The most common way to like implement aiming would be code it in the update function. So let's go to update over here. Let's implement aiming. So we're gonna lerp the camera. We're gonna lerp the camera when we uh, right click or right hold your mouse, so get mouse button and then if it's not dead so we also check for has gun and the tech weapons is another script which detects the weapons so we could just use one of the functions it has which coincidentally ha is a bool that checks has gun and then over here inside the loop we're gonna want to implement the aiming which is lerp in fov and lerp out fov so let's do that let's implement two floats float lerp value 1 equals 0 f and then float lerp value 2 equals 0 f and then we're gonna do lerp value 1 plus 5 let's do like 5 times time dot 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 time <clears throat> that's what i found to be like a good speed and then we'll float and then over here we're gonna lerp so i usually play on 90 fov we could over here uh, it goes from 90 to 20 fov 
and then alert value one. So alert value contains the FOV number. And then we're gonna use one of Danny's scripts to set the FOV. No, and then we're gonna set it to lerp. Nope, 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 lerp. Oh my gosh, no, number. And then we set lerp value to equal to zero. This is the first chunk done. So if we right click and all the conditions are true, then we could lerp in to, to FOV of 20, which is basically zooming in and aiming. And let's test that. So the way we're gonna update the game and mod it is we're gonna go ahead to build and then we're gonna build the solution, which builds the new assembly C sharp DLL file. So let's go ahead and build it. Build succeeded. All right, now we're back in the mods folder. We're gonna go inside bin, debug, net standard, and then we're gonna see the DLL file over here. We have a bunch of other ones, but we haven't changed any of the Unity Engine DLLs. We just ignore that. We're gonna pick out the assembly C sharp DLL, copy it, so control C, and then we go back to home, data, managed, and we go back to where we originally got the DLL file, and we could just go ahead and paste it in. So we replace the file. And now let's just test it out, test what we have coded in. All right, so let's do it. There we go, it works. Um, now we just gotta implement going back if we let go, okay. And yeah, we just do the same thing, uh, switch some values and boom. So do you wanna make the enemies giant and thick? Logically, what you wanna do is to go to the enemy file. So here we're inside the enemy script and let's go to start. And obviously we're gonna change the transform scale right at the start. This one's so easy, but so fun. Let's set it to a f size of five. All right. And oh my God. Okay, the next thing I made is rising lava. So let's go to the lava script and it's super empty. So we could code anything we want. All right, here it is. I've taken each side and multiplied it by 1.001. 1 uh, <laughs> I just realized I could just do this. What the? All right, let's test it out. Oh my gosh, he has a long neck. Anyways. Oh, oh no. Let's just watch it rise. Oh, it's rising pretty quick. Hold up. Okay, let's see if the lava could get me over here. Oh no, I need to get up. Go up, go up. Okay, the final thing I implemented was the milk following the player. I remember this one being the toughest one. So let's go ahead and go to the milk script. So the idea is the bullet hits the milk and it follows the player. Let's go ahead and make a boolean. All right, the moment of truth. Oh, it's following, it's following. Okay, let's shut it off. There we go. Let's go. All right, this is it. Uh, this is Carlson remodded, I guess. And yeah, let's move on to Muck. So here's the game files from Muck. So we want to do the same thing, grab the code and then go to IO Spy and extract it. All right, let's dive into Muck's code. One of the things I implemented in my video was draining stamina when I swung my whatever. So I'm gonna be jumping around a lot of scripts for this. So I think after looking around, so I decided to go to the use inventory script. I made my own player inventory uh, boolean. Just to keep track of the swinging. Within the use function, I'm gonna add another else and I'm gonna check if it's not swung and player can't swing. Can't swing, but the thing is, can't swing does not exist, so I gotta make it. Uh, so I also created a can swing method that returns a boolean. So all I did was uh, copy the can jump method and made a can swing. And since this doesn't exist, of course, gotta declare it at the top. Right next to jump drain, I'm gonna just like put it here. Something, something like that, yeah. And on top of that, I also wanna make sure that it takes away energy, uh, stamina when I swing. So over here, 
um i'm pretty sure this is where all the stamina draining happens i'm gonna make a check so first thing if player is swinging then i will drain energy and then we set it to false right after oh wait and boom and i added this just to match everything else and let's boot this up same thing you make a build and go to folders and the folders you go to bin debug and then all the way to the dll assembly c sharp and then replace it in muck let's test it out moment of truth it works next i remember implementing some minecraft style critical hits so you know when you jump right as you land you hit and you get a crit um, excuse me, the so the place where i found the critical hit code is within the power up inventory script right here i found the get crit chance and i want to change this code to how i want it to be if you're not grounded and you hit then you get a critical and boom and there i added two simple lines simple as that so it checks if it's grounded and while you're still in the air and you hit then you get one more damage yeah okay let's test this critical oh, boom all right jump oh yeah jump hit let's go let's go and yup we can unlock everything here nice so that's all i'm gonna mod for muck right now just reminder this is like bare bones all right speaking of bare bones modding there's a way to put your own 3d models within the game i've tried this before and i did successfully put a model inside another game the only problem was the script wasn't working that method is called asset bundling and uh what you do is you go to unity you make your own prefab of your object and then you make an asset bundle and in the game you want to mod within the script you call the asset bundle and you take the 3d model away kind of extracting it and then you instantiate it to the game that you want to mods world if you guys don't know my game already lost grime uh this kind of looks like a cabbage uh, anyways i made this game after I, I did all the modding stuff so of course i added some secrets if you modded it but it didn't go as planned huh? if you go to my scripts I have two scripts, one called secret code and one called lore. So if you go to secret code, let's open it up. You get this. So, hey, how did you get here? It's sneaky, sneaky. Look at my code. <laughs> and then if we open lore, we just have this, a script that runs, but doesn't do anything until you actually fill everything in. So what I mean by that is uh, there's transform position and then chords X that's the player regions are labels uh, and then these are the coordinates that you could plug into if you code it right and you would get placed into somewhere secret it's a secret room so let's do it ourselves because uh my plan failed if you use io spy you can't see comments or regions which sucks but i'm here to show you today so let's get rid of the regions so we could actually let this run and then we set chords to a and let's compile it and see where we end up in well, I hope you guys enjoyed that modding tutorial. Please like, subscribe, and peace.